Sorry guys, well that was not planned. I started off today with a nice swim in the brown waters of the St. Lucie River because I don't know if you guys saw when I was launching the boat, the truck actually slid back. So I hopped in the truck as quick as possible because I did not want to lose my truck. And unfortunately then the 25, 30 foot long rope that usually I use as the leash when I'm launching uh, slid off the dock and the boat floated out a ways, probably like 20, 30 yards from the dock. So I jumped in before it pushed any closer to the bridge where there's like a shallow oyster bar over there. And we got lucky. <laughs> oh, what a way to start. At least I'm gonna be cool for the first couple hours because I'm totally soaked. But the plan for today is to go way down river and I'm gonna check out the uh, ocean conditions, maybe go out on a near shore reef and I've got some frozen sardines and I've got a sabiki. So I'll probably start with the frozen sardines and then maybe try and catch some fresh bait and see if there's any snapper that are willing to bite. And then maybe on our way back up river, also do uh, some snook fishing. And yesterday I was out doing some snook fishing and I did pretty well. I hooked into five big fish, landed three. So I think the potential is there to get on a similar bite uh, on our way back in. And today's my last and final day before heading to Brazil, which I'm super pumped about. So stay tuned, hit that subscribe button and uh, hit that like button if you enjoy in the end. Now let's get after it. made it out to our first spot and it looks like we have a bunch of bait here wherever this ripply water is so I'm gonna try and catch some I do have some of these vacuum sealed frozen sardines but fresh is best so we'll see if we can get a few oh I'm on that didn't take long. Ah, I lost them. Oh, I'm on again. Threadfin. Nice. If we can keep this guy alive, this is also great snook and tarpon bait, sailfish bait, everything will eat that. There we go, got a couple more. Oh, look at that. That is what I'm talking about. All right, pretty sweet. We got a couple dozen live thread fins in like five minutes of fishing with the sabiki. So I'm gonna head over to our first spot where we'll try and see if we can get some snapper. And I think I'll try the frozen dead bait first just to see if it works. And if we don't get anything in like the first like 10, 15 minutes, then I'll probably make a plug out of one of these live baits just by like cutting the head off, cutting the tail off and sending it down. And that'll be perfect for a big mutton or maybe a big mangrove, a yellowtail snapper could be at this spot that we're going to. So we shall see, let's go have some fun. All right, let's give it a shot here. Got a bunch of bait right on the spot too. So I think we'll have a shot at catching more if we need it. I'm gonna put the pan optics in the water as well. I think this might help us find some really nice snapper here. And maybe I'll be able to like drop a bait like right on their nose. Look at all that bait right there. That's pretty cool. I mean, you can see it right there on the surface too. <laughs> so it's not like it's that difficult to see. These baits are just making it too easy for me. These might be sardines too. So it'd be cool to have a different 
type of bait. Oh gosh, no. The big kudas were on me like instantly and they just cut up my sabiki. Dang it. Well, we're gonna send this guy down first, I guess. gonna hook on my sardine plug just like that and that should be perfect for a big mutton or a big cuda is gonna eat it right away oh my gosh oh gosh that cuda almost got these sardines Get out of here. They were thinking about it. Get out of here. Just got bit. There's a fish. Oh my gosh, look at that. A real tiny little amberjack. Oh, something just ate. I'm pretty sure. Oh, oh I got him. There we go. Uh, oh no. We got a mutton, but this cuda got him. Oh, get over here. Oh my God, he still grabbed him right there. Jesus. Oh. All right. We're heading out of here. <laughs> we wasted probably like two and a half hours on this first spot. And we had one mutton, but he got sliced right in half like you saw and then taken. And I'm afraid uh, if we hook into any larger size snapper, if, if we can even get them, because this spot is kind of futile right now. There's very little current and it's just infested with kudos. Like one right here has got to be like 60 plus inches. So I bet even if we got like a keeper mutton on, the, one of these kuda could easily just cut it right in half. So I'm gonna move out a little bit deeper and it's 10.30 right now and the midday storms are probably gonna start around two to three, 4 p.m. So we'll go out for like an hour and a half, two hours out there and then uh, probably just come straight back in shore and either go up inside or hit one other spot a little bit closer in that's a little bit further south and yeah, that's kind of the game plan. And oh, I got to put the live scope away. All right, let's see if there's any fish out here. And ideally, I would love to just get like one like keeper size mangrove or mutton so that I could have that for dinner tonight and lunch tomorrow and then tomorrow night I fly out to Brazil. So I don't really need a whole lot of fish. Definitely a little bit more current out here, which is good. Oh my God, look at the dolphin right there. He's going down at my bait he better not eat it they're usually pretty smart so it's not like it's gonna get the hook it'll probably just eat it and take it off the hook ah.
Yep. The dolphin took it off the hook. I'm gonna try a smaller piece of bait. Something like that. Maybe the dolphin won't want to waste his time with it for a small bite like this. Kind of crazy. Look at that right there. That's a dolphin, I believe. That could be a shark. They're, they're just sitting right underneath me here. You can see them on this regular sonar as well. But it's cool with live scope, you can actually kind of see what it is. Oh. Got something decent here. There we go. There's the leader. Hey, there we go. We got a mutton today. Sweet. And they gotta be 18 inches to keep. This one's gonna be close. Oh, look at that, right on 18. Perfect. We got ourselves dinner for tonight. All right, now that we know that there's some muttons here, let's try a little bit bigger chunk. Might have another fish here. There we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. This one might be a little bit bigger. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, come on up, baby. Come on up. Oh yeah, look at the size of that mutton there. That's a good one. And it has another leader hanging out of its mouth. Oh my gosh. Check this out guys, six, 12, about 18 feet of leader hanging out of this mutton's mouth. I'm gonna trim it back as close as I could get it. Let's get a quick measure, a nice 23 incher. And as you can see, this fish is suffering from barotrauma. So I'm gonna put her down on the descending device and send her back. So all you do is put the C equalizer on its lip just like that. Get it back in the water. And send her down. And right now I'm in like 98, uh, you know, close to 100 feet of water. And I have it set to 100 feet so once I get it down there hopefully the seat equalizer jaws will open and now let's reel it up and see if that fish was released nice now one of you guys at home can come out here tomorrow and catch them. All right, well that worked using a bigger chunk here on this spot because we got a slightly bigger fish. But that one that I threw in the box to keep is really like a perfect size 
for me just for one night tonight. Oh, 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 something decent. Just whacked it. Oh yeah, he's got it. There we go. Oh man, it's a little shark. Oh, he cut it right there. Oh, oh, there he is. Something nice. There we go. Oh. Oh, please be another snapper and not a shark. Oh, man. Now it has me in the structure. Whatever it is, I'm gonna loosen up on it and see if this fish swims out on its own. Ah, I got my rig back, I think, but I lost the fish. Oh, my whole leader is chewed up. All right, I'm tying on a new leader, but a little shorter, and I'm gonna try one last bait because I think that last fish was a really nice mangrove. So I just want to see if on our next drop, maybe with a little bit shorter leader, I'll be able to detect the bite sooner. So therefore come tight on him and penetrate the hook before he gets anywhere near the structure. And I just want to see if they're here. Oh, I got another fish here. go come on up it feels like a snapper oh no I got cut that was definitely a snapper but I think something that ate him Come on up, come on. Hopefully we get this one. Ah, uh, nope. Oh, just got eight. Hopefully I can get this one. That's a good fish here. Oh man. Oh no. I definitely got eight. Dang it. All right, well that's gonna be about it. I'm gonna put the skins on and head in that direction and go get wet again. But I'm not done fishing though. We'll probably stop off at the bridge that I fished yesterday where I caught some snook at and we'll try that again. And I'll probably fish with the thread fins and the artificials that worked yesterday and uh, just see if we can get a couple more fish before calling it a day. Well, miraculously, we actually didn't get rained on. <laughs> so I'm super happy about that. Let's see if we can get one big snook and then call it a day. All right, right there. I'm seeing some fish sitting real tight to the bottom. That's what they were doing yesterday. And yesterday I did real well with this swim bait. Oh, there was a bite. So I'm just hopping it along the bottom, this little swim bait. And I just got to get lucky to put it right in front of a hungry one because this water is super dirty. So if you bump them on the nose, 
I feel like they just feel it moving through the water rather than really seeing it. And then they just munch it if they're really hungry. <laughs> oh, dang, that was a big fish right there. Dang it. Just missed them. There's a couple fish right there, sitting on the bottom. There he is. Nice. That couldn't have worked out any more perfect. It's a good fish here. And that fish was just sitting on the bottom out away from the pilings. I love it when they're out away from structure like that. It makes my job a whole lot easier. Measuring tape wet. Get this beautiful fish out of the net. Perfect hook set. Right in the button, the tip of the nose. I saw you hanging out on the bottom, baby. Solid 35 incher. a wild one all right well I'm kind of content and ready to call it a day but I'm just gonna fish my way out to the main channel and then we'll call it so maybe I can get one or two more before we head out of here and I got lucky that fish did not fret my leader at all sweet but so far not a bad day we got ourselves some fresh dinner. We got some snapper. And now a nice overslot snook. And I definitely saw that fish on the bottom with the live scope here. So this thing is paying for itself. So cool. All right, guys. Big snook number two. But I'm starting to get a little delirious out here from all the sun and heat and I switched out the GoPro battery but I guess didn't press record uh, I thought I did but yeah I caught this nice fish and just didn't catch it on camera we get a quick measure on her this one's just shy of 37 down she goes all right, right there could be a fish about 40 feet away in that direction. I'm casting a little bit further to the right though of where the transducer is looking because um, I, have to, I have to have time to get it to the bottom and then also let it uh, swing a little bit and then it should be right in line with where the transducer is looking. Whoa, look at that nice fish right there. Out about 40 feet in that direction that's got to be a real big snook there he is oh. 
found another big fish just out there in the middle of nowhere. Oh, I love live scope. So cool. This is a real big one. Really big. This one might be 40 plus inches. Oh man. Yeah. An absolute unit. Fish has no quit in there. Oh man, she saw the net. Like literally she saw the net there. Uh. Oh, got her. All right, here we go. Whew. Look at that mama snook right there. She's not real long, but she is fat. Oh man, so cool. Wow. Look at that perfect hook set right in the corner of the mouth. And I had her hooked good. This fish wasn't getting away. Got it. Now let's get a quick measure on her. Woo! Just a hair over 40 inches. All right, time to send her on home. What a monster. Let's see if she's ready to go. Yeah. Woo! All right, well, no other bites, unfortunately and the wind kicked up towards the end there, so it made it a little more challenging uh, during my last dozen casts to feel that jig bouncing along the bottom. So uh, I decided just to wrap it up. I had my fill of fishing today, and really cool to uh, learn more and more about my Garmin Live Scope and how it can help me uh, really find the fish and catch them. And it, it was really cool to be able to spot fish out away from the main bridge structure and then just present it right. Hop, you know, swimming it right along the bottom, hopping right along the bottom and just making sure it swings and gets right in their uh, sight or in their range where they feel it going by them. And those snook just nailed it. And I was doing something kind of similar yesterday so today, uh, I really got the chance to uh, perfect that technique a little bit uh, while using the, the Garmin Live Scope. So super cool, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time, I guess, in Brazil. So stay tuned, and like always, live to fish, fish to live.